100 people. They take money out of their own pockets. Fly at their own expense. Amen. Oh, bless. I have changed my message about four times. And I'm looking at you and I'm seeing how weary you are. It's been a long, 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 long and wonderful day. And so if you will, I invite you to the book of Mark. Fourteenth chapter of the book of Mormon. And I will read the words of our Lord found in that ninth verse. These are the words of the Lord Jesus. I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout all the world. Thank God. I want to talk about this gospel. If you would please, while you're sitting down, turn to Matthew 24 verse 14. Here again are the words of our Lord. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. As I read that scripture and as it came up on my mind and, and that the reason why I changed my message is because I was thinking about what you taught me more than anything else. And as the choir was saying, what is it that I got from my father that was more precious than anything. They, they need the key. But chairman, they need the key to the car. One of my board members had to leave early. We're giving him back to the airport. And the most precious thing that you've ever given me there not been money. You, you are a giver of money. And I can remember, I mean, the $10,000 that I gave him is no big feat. I, I wish I could give him more. I remember when my father would come and preach for me and we, we'd take love offerings. We were preacher preachers. We believe that the servant is worthy of his heart. And, 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 and while it looks like we're making a big fuss out of money, the fact of the matter is, it is very clear from the scriptures that if a man is ministering to you in the spiritual things, 
you got to minister back to him in the heart. This, this is a biblical principle. It's, this is no new thing here. I mean, you know, we want to give preachers all we can give them. Am I right about it, somebody? And so I, I learned it from my father. He would come and preach for me, and we would take a love offering. Sometimes that love offering for him was $800. We'd put it in a bag and give it to him, and he would leave it on my desk. Say, son, you take that. Oh, you're a giver of money. The people in this sanctuary who you've done so much for them. People who work for you. People who you put money in their pocket. People who you paid their rent. People who you saved their car. And by the way, you are broke today. Because of all that you've given away. But you're rich in so many other ways now, though. And so you give us me some valuable things, but when I thought about it, I said the most important thing that God, that my father's ever given me and the most important thing he's ever given anybody was this gospel. And, and the scripture says that when this gospel, I figured that, that if there's anything that I could do that could inspire you, Dad, is to just make sure you know that your son is still preaching this gospel. I'm in Philadelphia, but I'm still preaching this God. And I want you to know, my friend, that the reason why the Bible says this gospel is because there are some people out there perpetrating a fraud who are preaching no gospel. Somebody ought to say amen. And the gospel that I'm preaching, uh, a Shinto priest can't understand. Uh, the gospel that I'm preaching, uh, Mormonism can't understand. Oh yeah, I said that. I'm talking about this gospel. I'm talking about the gospel of the New Testament. I'm talking about the gospel that Jesus is talking about. Am I right about it? And when this gospel has been preached all, only then shall the end come. All this positive thinking and all this other stuff that we got going on, there's no gospel at all. I see, I see in the book of Galatians, in that first chapter, in that sixth verse, I hear Paul saying, I marvel at you. I am surprised because you have turned unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Jesus Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. And so I said before, now I say again, if any man yeah. preach another gospel unto you, let him be damned. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm talking about this gospel. And when you talk about this gospel, you don't have to apologize. Am I right about it? Somebody ought to say amen. I'm looking at some of you all who are Christians right now, and you you get nervous because you're thinking that I may offend somebody when the gospel, when this gospel is preached right. Somebody is going to be offended. When this gospel is preached right, a sissy is going to get offended. When this gospel is preached right, a whoremonger is going to be offended. When this gospel is preached right, a lying, gossiping, slimy, backbiting, is going to be offended. You know what the problem is in our churches today? Around this country, I've noticed it, that, that, that we are following a gospel that's not a gospel. We want a gospel that fits our feet like our shoes. Amen, guys. We, we, we want a one of gospel that, that, that scratches us right where we itch at. 
Somebody ought to say amen. And see, the problem with that is that when you preach that kind of gospel, you end up with a church full of fans. And not a church full of followers. And there is a profound difference between a fan and a follower. Am I right about it, son? When, when you got a fan, Dad, you, you had fans in your church, they ain't here no more. They were fans. There's a difference between a fan and a follower. Am I right about it? That there's, some, there's some folk who were, were fans of Jesus, but they weren't followers of Jesus. You see, a fan puts on the cap of their favorite team. And they'll put on the favorite jersey of their favorite team. Uh, but, but they never get in the game. And they're on the sideline. Am I right about it? With a big pot belly and a beer and a popcorn in the other hand. Come out, get them. But when this gospel is proven, Be some followers. Am I right about it? This gospel says, If any man come to me and hate not his mother, his sister, his brother, yea, even on his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And if you don't pick up your cross and follow me daily, you cannot be my disciple. This gospel says that you must seek first the kingdom. Not, not your kingdom, amen. Not my kingdom, but the kingdom of God. I'm going to tell you what the Lord said to me. I'm, I'm going way ahead of myself, but I feel like preaching now. But the Lord said three things to me several weeks ago. He woke me up. The first thing he said to me is, you got too much stuff. You got too many cars. You got too many houses. You got too many shoes. Amen, ladies. <laughs> you got too much stuff. And so what I did was I, I, I got and I looked in my closet and I started grabbing stuff and I left out of the house with all kinds of things. Went down and got a basket of stuff. Just giving stuff away. Then I called my brother-in-law Mac and I said, Mac, go and get that car. I got this one Porsche I drive, but then I got another Porsche in the garage. And, and, and I, I've driven that thing maybe three times all year long. I said, Matt, go get that car. What are we going to do with it? Clean it up. What are we going to do? I said, follow me. We're going to sell it. Sell it. I said, yeah. Well, I'm going to sell it. I'm going to give half of it to the church. Another half to the people. People, I'm going to take a little bit for myself. You see, when you love this gospel, your stuff don't mean a whole lot. And when you obey this gospel, God will give you some more stuff. I got, I got to tell you what happened. I got to tell you. I'm driving. I get there. I have a friend who owns about six or seven car dealerships. Somebody like Cardinelli. I pull in. I'm not thinking he's going to be there. I just got the keys to sell this thing so I can bless the church and bless people for people. And so I pull in. And when I pulled in, he was sitting there. He said, what you doing? I said, well, the Lord was talking to me this morning. He said, what? <laughs> The Lord told him, he told me he had too much stuff. He started like, boy, what's wrong with you, Her? He says, give him the best price you can give him on that car. Give him the best price. He said, come to my office. I went to his office. He says, tell me, how's your ministry going? How is your ministry going? I said, we're doing all right, but we're about $100,000 down. He reached in his drawer, came out, and wrote a check for fifty thousand dollars, and said, "Go to your boy and tell them to match it by December the thirty-first, and you'll have your hundred thousand. I want you to know that money has already been matched. One hundred thousand dollars. Why? Because I wasn't holding on to my stuff." And what I'm going to tell you, my friend, if you will let go, I watched you while we were taking this offering. Y'all y'all holding y'all stuff too much. I watched you when I saw you frowning, I saw people nervous. You better loosen and let it go. 
If you want to be blessed of God, you got to trust God with everything that you have. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. Somebody here ought to say amen. Sometimes I've seen people who don't understand the gospel. And you know, you read, you read about it and you hear these people on TV, these, these wonderful looking people on TV. They, they get it all choreographed. Comes out at the right time, closes at the right time, smiles at the right time. But they don't have buck teeth like mine, they got the veneer. Hey Amen, my. They fix their teeth up. You know, you can do that now, right? You can just make your teeth look any way you want it to look. And so they, they get on TV and they talk and they smile and they say, it's going to be all right. Just hold on. God loves us all. It's going to be fine. Just tell your neighbor it's going to be fine. No gospel. Sometimes it's not fine. Sometimes the road gets rough. And the going gets tough. You don't, if you don't believe me, ask those two sitting over in those seats. I have never seen two couple, a couple, to go through more than that two have gone through and made it. I wish somebody would say, you know what, you know better than me. I've been somewhere else. They, they've been through the storm and they've been through the rain, but look at them still. God is keeping them. Because they have a love for this gospel. Am I right about it, somebody? Somebody say amen. But I'm just trying to, I listen to the radio, they say we, and when you listen to the radio shows and TV, they now claim they have the truth. These new age people, they have deeper depth, they have greater understanding, and some of them will go as far as to say that they have God's last revelation. As though our God had to revise his first revelation. You see, his first one is still all right with me. Because God never changes. He has immutability. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Why would he need to change? He doesn't need any updating because everything is present before him. He spoke before time existed. He knew the end of time before time started. There is no new material that can be presented to him. He needs not go to a refresher course to refresh his mind. For who can refresh the mind of an omnipotent, sovereign, free and dropping God all by himself? Paul says, I marvel at you. I am surprised because you have turned to another gospel. Uh, you, you have turned to a feel-good gospel. Uh, you have uh, turned to a gospel that suits your own fancy. And when you turn to the gospel, you don't have Jesus. The Jehovah's Witnesses are preaching no gospel. I'm sorry, y'all. You got you got, got relatives in that? You better get them out. You better tell them that they're on their way to hell. That's what this gospel says. You better love on them with some gospel, amen. If you got Jehovah's Witnesses in your house, you better love on them with the gospel of Jesus Christ because if you don't, you will not see them in heaven. They'll be lifting up their eyes at you. I'm talking about this gospel. These Jehovah's Witnesses, they are all so biblical. And if you're not, you go to Sunday school, y'all. Come out, come out. I found out his name. And they then left the Baptist church and left Pentecostal churches and left the Christian faith because somebody told them God's name. Oh my God, how can you be so foolish? They, he got all kinds of names. One name can't contain God. Yes, he is Jehovah. And he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Zikami. He's Jehovah Rofi. He's Jehovah Makedis. How y'all know God? Don't start with me now. Oh, he got a lot of names. And yes, he does. He says, I am that I am. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Moses said, who shall I say have sent me? He said, tell him I am that I am. If you need bread, I am that. If you need water, I am that. If you need a friend, I am that. If you need a bridge up a trouble water, I am that. I'm a mother for the mothers, a 
father for the father, a friend for the friend, a doctor that's never lost the case. I am that I am. Y'all cut it out now. I'm not finished. I'm trying to preach it. And they say, they say, well, how do you how do you really know whether you saved or not? Because uh, we're running a race. And how do you know when you're saved not until you get to the end of the race? Yeah. They say when you get to the end of the race, God has some scales. Yeah. And he puts your good deeds on one side and your bad deeds on the other side. If your good deeds are where your bad deeds, then you go to heaven. But if your bad deeds are where your good deeds, then you go to hell. And all I got to say about that is you need to put me on the scale. Don't put me on the scale if it's going to be a way in. Just let me go on to hell right now. Way in yeah. Yeah. Y'all need to come over here with me too. Because I don't think there's anybody in here that could suggest that they've done enough good to get to heaven. The Bible says there is none that do it good. No, not one. The Bible says the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born speaking lies. The Bible says what is man that he should be clean and he that is born of a woman that he should be righteous. The Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rag in the sight of the living God. David said, behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. what the gospel is. They got some people here, the reason why you think you are perfect is because you don't know but four or five sins. <laughs> that reason you think you're perfect, amen. But you can name them, everybody can name them. The street kids, dancing, gambling, running women. And then we, that's all we know is four or five sins. But when you get too sick, sick to drink, and too crippled to run women. And too old to count because you can't gamble no more. Don't be running there talking about you holy. You ain't holy, you just holy. Design to march in the hell if it's gonna be a, a way. Amen. I'm talking about this gospel right here. Because what this gospel says is that there's some forgiveness in this gospel. That this, this gospel will make a sissy a saint. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? This gospel will cover a sissy. Somebody need to say something here. If anybody here is struggling with that problem, you better raise your hand and say, thank you, Jesus. And because th th this gospel will cover you. Am I right about it? Somebody ought to say amen. This, this gospel will cover a whole moment. Am I right about it, somebody? Somebody, somebody don't, don't raise your hand. I don't want everybody looking at you, but, but say amen, everybody at the same time. Amen. You know, some of y'all, you, you don't know this gospel yet. If you've never had a shout, it's because you don't know this gospel. If you ain't never shouted, you don't know this gospel. Amen. And in this gospel, when you think about what God has done for you. Don't, don't start, I ain't ready to go yet. But when you saw, when you saw McGee get up here and say he lost his mind and started shaking his leg. This gospel will do that to you. Yeah. Am I right about it, Pastor McGee? Want to do it? Yes, sir. I'm saying amen. Amen. This uh, And then, you know, you 
know, you know, I, I, I know that we, we, want, we want to go somewhere, but we can't go there yet. There, 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 is, there are those who are now telling us that we need to get together with all the other religions. And, and, and when, I, when I was in college, they, they called an interfaith meeting of Mohammed and Buddha. And all, all of them got together. Uh, and then they say, you come on because you're a Christian and we're going to just dialogue. And I told them, I'm not, I'm not a dialoguer. I'm a proclaimer. In other words, I have something to give, but I ain't taking nothing. I represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. To go to no interfaith meeting to discover anything because I got it right here on the book in the book. Am I right about it? Am I right about it? What do I need with Mohammed? I have a Christ that was dead, buried, and alive. I have a Christ that walked on the wall. We got our, our young people, so we're losing some of them because you all are not standing for this gospel. You, you got to keep teaching your, your, your young people this gospel. Yeah. Let them call you narrow-minded. Now, they, they, I know there are people in there right now. I saw some people get up when I was preaching because they said that, that's a narrow-minded young man. Well, I'm sure glad that, doctor, you read my degrees. Amen. Narrow-minded I am when it comes to this gospel. Oh, I, I have my degrees. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong. I, I got all the stuff that you got. Amen. I can pontificate my erudition through pansophic reason from a pedagogical approach. But the problem is if I do that, it won't be this gospel. Yeah, and behold the beauty. 
and of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Pastor and Sister Luss, happy anniversary. You are dismissed. Thank you, Greater Exodus. I love you, Greater Exodus. I love you. You are, you are.